This right here is Canary Wharf Station, a station that before today was mostly used by wanky bankers. However, now with the completion of the first section of the Elizabeth Line, we'll now see this station open up to a lot more people who just want more speed. Which I guess is just more bankers, actually. Now, jokes aside, the Elizabeth Line, or the old Lizzie Line as I like to call it, has finally opened to the public. Well, kind of. Most of it did. Some of it did. If you're not aware, Crossrail has had a pretty bumpy journey from start to halfway finished. For those of you unaware, Crossrail is a massive railway project for London that aims to link the west of the city to the east. As west as far out as Reading and Heathrow, all the way to the east as far out as Abbey Wood and Shenfield. I didn't mean to put it in quotes, but I've also never heard of it before this, so I'm excited to learn more about Shenfield. But the big exciting thing is that it's going through London. It's an additional line that means that we can travel so much faster from here and there. Crossrail as a concept was initially proposed in 2007, the funding was approved in 2009, and well, it was meant to open up in 2017, and then 2018, and then 2019, but then 2020, but then 2021. <laughs> And, and now it's 2022 and the first half of it has opened, which is why you can imagine it has been the butt of so many jokes for all of London, basically, and all Londoners for the last decade. It's kind of like that old joke, like a child goes to his dad and says, dad, can I have Crossrail by 2017? And he goes, 2018? Oh, how, 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 what are you gonna do with Crossrail in 2019? I mean, it's 2020. How are you gonna be using that in 2022? You know? <laughs> Fact of the matter is as well, not only was it four years over plans, but it was four billion pounds over budget. So, oh boy, that, that's coming out of my taxes. So you've got a new train line. Okay, London, you got a lot of trains. Why is this so exciting? Well, imagine you're someone in the North and they just opened new Greggs. You've got loads of Greggs, but I can bet you, you're going to get yourself a celebratory sausage roll, okay? I know it. Now, these are really exciting times for me. Here I am sitting on the Elizabeth line with nowhere to go in particular, just because I wanted to ride it on opening day. These times are so exciting, in fact, that I will talk to people about the Elizabeth line that have absolutely no interest in anything about London's infrastructure. The other day I was in LA having dinner with my friend Elle and she goes, well, Evan, what's new with you? And I respond, well, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, we've got a new train line opening up in London. I'm so excited. That's how excited I am, okay? She doesn't give a crap. The, saying the word train in LA, they're like, what does that mean? Are you training for something? <laughs> you mean the thing that poor people take? <sighs> Now here at Paddington Station, the excitement is actually huge. As you can see, they actually have painted these lovely clouds. Because you know, in London, it's gonna be cloudy. But with lovely blue sky peeking through, it doesn't matter if it's a beautiful day like it is currently today. Every time you leave the station, you'll be able to look up and see this beautiful little sky that integrates so incredibly well with the rest of Paddington Station. Now the team behind Crossrail obviously took a bit long to do everything, but their attention to detail with certain things like tying in the architecture of each station that is non-Crossrail with the Crossrail counterpart can really be told. So I'm still at Paddington Station. I just didn't expect the excitement to be this high. I knew I was excited, but there is street art all around based on the Elizabeth line. There's three or four different beautiful pieces of purple trains. You gotta love it. There's also supposedly a merch store. As someone that recognized me, thank you very much, Jonathan, hi, uh, for coming up to me and telling me there's a merch stand here. So I think it's best we see who wants to get some train merch. Guys, if you want interior design tips from me, there you go. Exclusive Elizabeth Line moquette furniture available. Oh my god. I, look, I actually don't hate the throw. I'm gonna be honest, that's so cool. Socks. That's quite nice. 95 quid for the throw. Oh, I got lots of books and such, and oh my god. That is a really nice coffee table book. I think I'm gonna pick that up, actually. You can have your very own Elizabeth Line train. An adult t-shirt. <laughs> we even have a little rounder there. I really wanna know who the demographic is for those like seat cushions. Whose house is gonna have those? I wanna know. I, do you wanna like live like you're on the underground all the time? The fact of the matter is, the Lizzie Line will cut down commuting times massively across the board. Now, I have two really interesting use cases for this. In particular, I used to live out in the West, and so I've got quite a few friends out in the Acton area. And now I kind of live a stone's throw away from Canary Wharf. Both of these have stations on the Elizabeth Line when it fully opens. So once the Elizabeth Line fully opens, I will finally have friends again. Because at the moment, I live over an hour away on the underground from a couple people. Living over an hour away in London is pretty much akin to committing social suicide. Just ask anyone living in Chesham or Streatham or anywhere else south of the river. Don't tell me about how incredibly exciting it is living in Clapham or Tooting. 
You can lie to yourself all you want. I'm on to your scam. You live over an hour away, I'm out. Even if I'm the one that lives over an hour away, I know it's the game. However, that's where Lizzie comes to play. In fact, the trip that I would take from Canary Wharf to Acton Mainline is an hour and 17 minutes at the moment. However, once we finish, whoa, we're down to 47? That's right, I'm going to Friend Town, all right? That's a new station opening up. Population me and my friends that I have, the real, I promise. Now, another really good use case for me is that I have a girlfriend that lives out in a little podunk town west of London called Maidenhead. Don't know if you've heard of it, but it directly translates to Hyman. You heard me right. What you say to the driver on your way into the bus. Now, that aside, every time I want to visit my girlfriend, oh my God, is it a ball ache? You gotta get on the train near Canary Wharf, ride the Jubilee Line past the loudest part of the entire train network, all the way slowly to Baker Street Station. Switch off, time to get on the Bakerloo, run across the platform, three more stops, boom, you make it to Paddington, get off the tube network, now it's time to get on the rail. Now you gotta buy a rail ticket, get on the train, oops, it was the wrong train, you're in Ealing Broadway, switch trains, oh my God, take a long time, you're now in Maidenhead, okay? Repeat the process on the way back. It's very convoluted, it's very annoying, and, it's worth it, okay? This is what relationships are about. However, after Lizzie pops that cherry of completion of the entire network, getting to Maidenhead will actually be so much simpler for me. I just get on one train in Canary Wharf and I just sit back. I ride it, it goes all the way to Maidenhead. I get off, relationship saved, okay? <laughs> It sounds like a dream. Now, before I get the comments about this, no, Elizabeth Line is not actually a tube line as much as a rail line. However, I really don't care about the distinction between these two things as much as I do care about the distinction between the tube lines and the overground. Underground, overground, very different. One of them is good. The other one's the overgrounds. I, if you live on the overgrounds, same thing as living an hour away. Don't talk to me. I'm not hanging out with you unless there's also a tube line attached, okay? It trains every 15 minutes. What do you think this is? Wild West? But I do think it's interesting to note that every single train journey I have made to Maidenhead in the last couple months, I've seen that we now have the purple Elizabeth line rounders at each of the stations on the rail along the way. So for the most part, I am riding the Elizabeth line every time I visit my girlfriend in all things except for the name. It's just a slower and less connected train line but it's pretty much the same rails. But until it is fully finished, I am very excited to finally get to ride the Elizabeth line inconsequentially to nowhere. In fact, right now, for the small amount that is finished, I can now get to Tottenham Court Road and to Bond Street at a much quicker speed. In fact, it, there's such a decrease in time to get to Whitechapel, now I can go to Shoreditch if someone wants me to go to Shoreditch. You know, the option's there. It's, it's a lot faster. No more buses. That and after riding the Elizabeth Line, it is so stunning how beautiful and how much attention to detail has been put into each and every train station. Like you can tell that the people that went incredibly over budget and took four years extra, well, they took that time to make something that to be proud of. You can really tell how much effort was put in and I'm just so excited that I got to ride it. And in fact, the funnest fact of all, supposedly, once the Elizabeth Line is fully complete, it's meant to relieve the congestion on the rest of the tube lines by 20%. Now, it's probably not going to be enough to alleviate the overflowing Northern Line trains at night or do anything to make Green Park less of a ball lake, but it's a welcome addition nonetheless. And as a Londoner, I am so happy and proud we have another line that everyone has spent a collective 18.8 .8 billion pounds to have. I'm excited for Crossrail too by the time I'm dead. <laughs> Next week's video is about TV licenses. Woo! So don't forget to subscribe to see that in your sub box. Ring my bell. And last week's video, I had a mental breakdown. A lot of good reasons to subscribe to my channel. Help me get to that 1 million. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys here next Sunday, as I always do. Goodbye.